All right, guys, welcome back. Squid Talk Pod. I don't even know what episode this is, but it's a good one. Parker Godfrey, founder of Kiora. You know, how old are you again, by the way? 27. 27. So you're you're close to my age, a little older. Um, But, you know, entrepreneur, just like me, similar industry, consumer goods. Um, We got connected through social media and... Parker's just an awesome guy, number one. He's got a killer company right now. You guys have probably seen their ads all over social media. So The point up guy. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're killing it right now, dude. And you're such a nice and chill guy. So I wanted to get you on here. Thank you for yeah. coming on. Um, let's do, let's get right into it. Like, of course. What, what's the timeline on Kiora, right? How did you start this? When did you start this? So I actually came up with the name in uh, high school. And I was just like kind of running the brand out of the back of my car, selling t-shirts from my car. Um, I had like, you know, 300 shirts just threw out all my money into it and started the brand from there and kind of fell off when I got into college. Um, but came up with the name, the concept and everything completely different to what it is now. But when I was in college, uh, fell out of passion for it. And so I just kind of got sidetracked with partying, having fun and, you know, was typical Greek life. Exactly. Greek life. And so. After I graduated, I was like, okay, what do I want to do? You know, so I was working in construction at the time. Um, during college, I had a handyman business because I loved architecture. And so I wanted to like figure out how I can get into the industry with no experience. So I was like, okay, I'm in college. I'm not an architecture major, but I want to like own my own business and learn a trade as well as I do it. And so did that through college. Um, then I graduated working for a construction company because I was getting into working for like a custom home builder and he, uh, kind of, you know, allowed me on his team where you have to have a ton of experience, but I was working in like the guts of the business doing all the warranty work, but it was a cool experience because I was working behind, uh, or at the homes of these like multimillionaires. So like every, the houses that I averaged working at were like 10 to 20 million. And you're like, I need one of these. And I was like, how do I get here? And if you yeah. surround yourself with like those type of people where, you know, I'm meeting the homeowners. So like I'm the first point of contact when they call the company and they're like, hey, my roof's leaking. They're calling me. I'm showing up and I'm like, what's going on? They're like, oh, who, who's this young dude? Whatever. And so the whole time I'm sitting there, my job was to get the subs to come over and work. And so I call the subcontractors, drywall guys, they'd be working and I'd be sitting there with like a dude who's worth 50 million bucks or one guy owns a distribu- uh, alcohol distributing company worth nine or his company does nine billion a year. Jesus. And I'm just sitting there talking with him and me and him became friends. And like the whole time I'd meet all these homeowners, I'd rotated through like 50 homes. I was just, you know, shooting the shit with all these people and talking to them and getting to know them. <laughs> what um, would you say most of them were pretty normal, pretty cool guys? Super or? normal. And that's like the thing that I learned about, like these people aren't anything different. Like, mm-hmm you know, and have a conversation with them and they're just normal ass people. And they're like no smarter than us. Like (laughs) genuinely. That's for sure. Like we'd have conversations and one correlation was that they just stuck with one thing for 40 years. And like over that period of time, they like did random, random ass businesses. It'd be like one dude owns a paper company. It's like the fucking Dunder Mifflin. (laughs) Yeah. I think that's important. I think a lot of people do switch and I'm even like struggling with that myself, switching from thing to thing. There's always... I like to look at it as like girls, right? Yeah. You know, you might be in a great relationship right now, but there's always going to be a hotter girl that is around the corner, right? And yeah. it's exciting and it's new. Yeah. It's like maybe it'll be better, but it's like, bro, you're, you got to build on what yeah. you've already been working on. Exactly. And, and things compound too. So the second you stop working on something, you're starting from square one and you don't see the momentum that's getting built with the thing you're doing. So like, if you look at the compound effect, if you've read that book or seen the concept of it, it's like for the first five years, you know, you may be doing, you know, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but it's exponential growth when you hit a certain point. And so sure. it's like, you just stick the course, you're going to hit a bunch of roadblocks anytime with anything. So like you start a new business, you're going to run into a bunch of bullshit. I've done it. I've been down that trap multiple times. Was and- Kiora your first business or... No. So I had a few, like in college, I had the handyman business and then I started email marketing. Um, I was doing that and I was starting to do pretty well. Um, I always had my hands in e-commerce. Like I wanted to do it and learn it. And so I was doing like stupid drop shipping products and never made money. And then finally I was just like, okay, I'm going to really dig in and just put my head down to this one thing and decide. Like it literally came down to a decision. I was just like, I'm going to make a decision that this is going to work. And so I kind of dabbled in the brand for a little bit and I, uh, you know, got an order of a small quantity amount for like 
you know, 10,000 bucks. Of the sunglasses? Yeah, of the sunglasses. Well, why'd like, you pick sunglasses, first of all? I was honestly naive at the beginning. So I wanted to have a cool brand. Like I always loved those like brands like Volcom, Ruka and things like that and wanted that lifestyle brand. And so I was like, I don't want to go down the clothing route because I don't want, you know, it's saturated. It's hard. It's dude. tough. Very hard. It's tough. And I don't want to be another cookie cutter surf brand. And so, you know, growing up in Southern California, I was always around the surf brands and I was like, oh, you know, like that's it. I'm just going to do that. But it's like, no, once I really learned business, you have to differentiate. And I was like, okay. What's a product that I can create this lifestyle, but not be, you know, just a cookie cutter surf brand that's selling t-shirts out of yeah. the back of my car. And so I was like, sunglasses, they're sick. I love architecture and design. And I'm like, okay, how do I tie architecture and design to like sunglasses? And I was like, okay, I'm going to get inspired by the, like my favorite homes all around the world. And so some of the architects that I love, like John Lautner, you know, he, I look at his houses. Oh, that's, so that's where the name that's, comes that's from. That's where the, the name comes okay, from. Cool. Yeah. And so I was just like, I love his architecture and I want to like, you know, curate what I see his vision of a home being in a pair of sunglasses. And so it's my rendition and kind of like my take on it. And so that's how the Lautner was born. And, you know, for the first year of the business, I had those 10 or $10,000 order, 300 pairs or something around that. Or no, it was like 600. But um, I was sitting on that inventory for like a year. And that was three years ago. And I'm like, damn, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was selling them for 50 bucks. And they were like, you know, shitty quality. The worst, nothing close to what we have Everything. Now. Your first runs yeah. are always the worst. My, my first products were terrible quality yeah. too. You're always V2ing things. And like, you know, I started with an MVP, which is good. Price point wasn't right. Quality wasn't right. And so I ended up putting a ton of R&D into like creating just like, everything you'd want to see in a pair of sunglasses and raise the prices with the extra costs that were associated. Um, and so then I really dove into TikTok and really figured out like, okay, how do you go viral? And so I started focusing on other brands that were crushing it. And so I have a few brands that like, you know, we're just consistently doing like a million views and I'm like, all right, I'm going to reach out to these guys. So the guy I reached out to was 16. No, he was 15 at the time. Oh, Larry? Larry. The no boy way. Larry. Surf yeah. trip shop for everyone watching. Surf Great, trip supply. Amazing kid, by the way. Awesome kid. Yeah. And he... Uh, also, I just want to say something. Yeah. That's really cool that you're willing to... That you have no problem like reaching out for help to yeah. someone who's significantly younger than you. I think a Dude, lot of people would get an ego, get their ego I, tripped I, up by that. I, I started succeeding when I dropped my ego. Yeah. The second I just decided, I'm like, I ain't shit. <laughs> I'm not shit, but I'm learning and I'm going to get better every single day and use that compound effect mm. just to keep moving the ball. And so I reach out to him and he's like, dude, just post like 10 times a day, like go on the for you page or go on the search page, find people in your industry that are going viral, find their video, like replicate it in your own way. Don't like blatantly copy it, but like replicate it and just post consistently. And that was when TikTok like loved that short form content. Mm. And so we ended up doing like 1.5 million views in a week and sold $70,000 worth of sunglasses. Wow. All and organic. Yeah. All organic. Damn. And so we ended up being able to have enough money. And that was actually the, the $10,000 $10, order. Mm. Um, well, after that, I just like really burn the boats. And I was like, I'm going to buy $25,000 worth of sunglasses. If it works, it works. But I was 40,000 bucks in debt at that time. And I was like, debt, as in credit card, debt, credit as in card. borrowing a loan, credit card, like three month credit card. Like, Jeez. yeah, I had an ex the, um, one of those e-com cards. I, I got an extension. And so it, uh, allowed me three months to pay it back. Mm. And so I was like, okay, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. I'm either shutting down the business or I'm taking a risk right now. And so I ordered $25,000 worth of inventory. It was sitting in my garage and I'm like, Fuck, this is like brutal. I don't know what to do. I reached out to Larry, like reached out to a few other people, just started really diving into how to do it. And it took off. Dude, fuck yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm super happy and congrats, yeah. by the way. Like, Thank you. By the Thank way, you. for anyone watching and you haven't tried his sunglasses, I have... I don't know, probably six pairs now. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I started wearing them, yeah. all of my friends back in college were like, these are, these are dope. So they got some. So yeah, the, that, the couple pairs you sent me for free, they paid off just so you know. Hell yeah. Um, okay. So I guess, you know, money isn't the only thing that matters, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people are curious, like how quickly things can move. You know, you said in your first year, what you, you did $10,000 worth of sales. First year when I was like selling the $10,000 or no, no, no. Like 
product cost was 10 grand. I okay, lost gotcha. money. I, I literally did 1500 bucks. That okay. Year. So that you, was 2021. Love the transparency. Yeah. So first year, you start this business, you're all excited. Yeah. You're like, fuck yeah, I'm going to be rich. You know, it's going to be awesome. That's yeah. what everybody thinks when they start. It doesn't go too well right away. It takes a lot longer than expected. Second year, what were your numbers? What were you So pulling? second year, for the first half of the year, from January to June, we did like 2,000. <laughs> so like <laughs> next to nothing, yeah. 2,000 bucks. And then May hit. We went viral on May 26th. And in two weeks, I did 70K. Wow. And then that was when I had all the $25,000 worth of inventory. And then uh, from there, we ended up being able to hire a team. So like mm -hmm. right when that happened, I was like, I know what to do because I was studying the industry. I was studying other brands that were like successful. So I was like, okay, the second I had the money in my account, I'm like, boom, hire a media, like paid media guy uh, or a media buyer. <laughs> and then hire a Google guy, hire email marketing, like everybody and assembled this like a team mm. and so from there in may like i knew i was like okay what are the variables like if organic slows down i can't rely on organic forever you know the end is like algorithms change you just don't know what's going to happen and so i'm like i need to create consistency and so building out a paid media team was like the next step and then from there we scaled to doing six hundred and fifty thousand that year that's crazy because that's yeah. the exact number i did last year no way um yeah so yeah. you know that that's dope and now and it's what like it's, it's 3x the next year right yeah Something so like then that. uh that was 2022 2023 we did 1.65 million um and then this year we're probably projected to get around three to four dude hell yeah that's how much awesome. we're spending and what our ROAS is yeah sweet fuck yeah well can you take the viewers or the listeners through the process of actually like the first steps of a brand right i think the hardest part is starting by far, right? You, yeah. you sit there and you have this idea and you, and you create your LLC and you think, okay, I'm an entrepreneur now, right? Yeah. But like, how do you actually start a business? You know? I think the biggest thing is like the old adage of like, if you want to cut down a tree in three hours, sharpen the knife for two and a half. Mm. Because like, if you accumulate the knowledge necessary to be successful, you will. But if you just start, like, yeah, of course, learning by doing is really important. But at the same time, like, learn from somebody who's already successful. So like one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten was find somebody living the life that you want to be living and ask them how they did it mm. and genuinely listen to them. Drop your ego. Don't think you know anything because if you're not making the money they're making, you don't, you yeah. don't know. <laughs> what, so. a, what about for your own brand though? Like what, what are the, what were the first steps? What was, was it like drawing a picture? Then what you go, you know, Alibaba, look for manufacturers or you go some yeah. Higher end, so like you go pretty much for me, it was like, okay, I'm going to approach a market, especially in like a saturated market by looking at what's already selling. And so I kind of approached it that way where I'm like, okay, what are best sellers from all like, you know, these other brands? Okay. What is a correlation in there? What's the type mm -hmm. of color? What's the shape? What's this? Like blah, blah, blah. And then you find out. How, okay, how do you even find out what's best sellers? Just looking on everyone's website. Yeah, so you can go to their website and look at the reviews and see, okay, like this you know, product has 10,000 reviews. This one has 500. That one sells better than that one. Um, and then you go to the con or the review section and you say, okay, let's go to Ray-Ban. And you look at Ray-Ban's reviews and you find all the one-star reviews. Okay, what are the one-star reviews saying? Oh, you know, customer service sucks. They scratch easy. They don't bend or like they bend out of shape. The hinges get loose. I'm like, okay, boom, I'm going to solve all those problems. And that's my marketing message. So now it's like when I po post an ad, I'm going straight for what people's problems are. That's really interesting. And I think, first of all, that's extremely valuable, what you just said. I did not do that in my business. <laughs> what I did was like, I'm just going to make something that I would want to wear. And then yeah. I tried to get everyone else to buy it. And, you know, yeah. thankfully it, it worked. Um, but see, that's yeah. very unique that, or not, I guess not even new, unique, but that's, that's the smart way of doing it, right? You see what the problem is, yeah. find the solutions. And then what I really like how you said there is you, you built on that, right? All of your ads are like looking yeah. for sunglasses that you can bend, that you can't scratch. Like, I mean, every working. every decision in, in business should be made based off data. Like there's no instinct. Like sure, you can have good business instinct, but at the end of the day, numbers are going to tell you. Mm -hmm. The facts are going to tell you. Like so if you look at it and approach it that way, like the second we started hitting good revenue, um, we like, I mean, I would just look at numbers all day. That's all I'm doing because now I'm just playing a game of numbers. Yeah. What's my ROAS doing? What's my CPA doing? What's my revenue? Like, well, how are my margins, my cogs and this and that? It's like, you're just, it's a big balancing act. And then you figure out how to make it work. Hmm. 
especially when you've spent some money on ads, then you get so much data back. That, oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's, you know, that's something I'm trying to work on myself right now. I, I like doing the, the fun marketing stuff, you know, like yeah. you can see my content a little well, bit. Your, like, your stuff is like the, uh, like the Holy grail of what you want to see in a brand, like the organic side of things. If you can crush that and nail it, like, you know, no acquisition costs. Dude, I need money. to work on, okay. So there's a couple of things that I need to work on right now. Yeah, let's I, do, need to, I, wanna, yeah. I need to work on my, um, my actual TikTok page, not my personal one, yeah. but the, the squid Hoss one. Yeah. Um, and I'm probably going to, after this, go through your videos and see like, okay, which one of these can I steal? Right. Yeah. Um, cause I think, you know, I'm, our page yeah. is lacking heart, right? It's all based off me. Yeah. Um, we also did no paid marketing. Um, yeah, that's up in, like, bro, we probably spent like 50 to a hundred dollars a day. That's insane. Right. So, yeah. However, you like you said, 100%, you can only grow so, far, so fast organically. So yeah. we're trying to get into ads right now too. Just brought on a new team. Um, but I think those are all, you know, part of that is just like admitting, like you can't do it all yourself. No. You need yeah. to bring on other people. Um, so I liked how you touched on that. I'm curious, what, um, what was the process of starting it like when it came to opinions of others? Right. We're, oh, yeah. Good luck with your little sunglass brand, bro. Oh like, my God, what did dude, your I, friends say? What did your parents say? I heard it so many times. My, my mom has always been amazing. Like she's Dope. just like, you can do anything. You're, you're a superstar, you know, <laughs> but literally genuinely gave me the confidence throughout my life to feel like I'm, she's, I don't know. I just had this confidence and this aura about myself where I could do anything. And when you're around like me when I was younger and, you know, hopefully today still like, you get that aura. And, and so she instilled that in me, but I a hundred percent had people that are like, yeah, it's not going to happen. So like we've had family members who, you know, have been successful business people. And, you know, one of my uncles was like, you know, what, what, what somebody's done in the family is one in a million. It's not possible. It's going to be tough. I don't know why you're doing it. Now, when we go to Easter, you know, he uh, definitely has a different appreciation for does what he, I'm doing. He, does he say like congrats <laughs> and good luck and proud no, of you? No, he does awesome. for sure. I mean, it's a full 180. It's just the biggest hug. I'm so proud of you. Like, That's good. You know, and so, I, you know, there's no, no, uh, what is it called? Animosity. Yeah, animosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, yeah, you know. So. Yeah, no, I had a very similar experience with my grandpa during yeah. graduation, college graduation. He's like, what are you doing, Lucas? Like, uh, I haven't heard your mom didn't tell me like where you're working. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, I'm not working. I'm working on the business yeah. with the, with Troy, my cousin. And he goes like, he goes, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to work, uh, but good, <laughs> good luck. And I was like, bro, shut up, bro. Like, what have you well, done? Well, that just, like, that shows somebody who's never started a business. <laughs> no, exactly. Successful. Exactly. Like, He's never started one, a business for yeah. He's a great guy. Good heart. Yeah. But, um, so you're around a lot of money, very motivating. Um, and it also kind of makes you feel bad at the same time. You're like, bro, I need to, yeah. I need to do shit right now. I need to move faster. And it can, yeah. you can really get in your head sometimes, you know, especially going back to what you said at the beginning, like when you're moving, when you're growing exponentially, when it's compounding the first, you know, majority of that lifespan, that timeline, there isn't much growth. And yeah. then all of a sudden stuff starts happening. So that can be really tough when you're first starting a business. I'm curious if you ever had any sort of doubt, like were there any moments ever where you're like, damn, I fucked up. Like I shouldn't have quit my like, <laughs> construction job maybe this isn't gonna yeah. happen well i think a lot of times like uh you have i mean doubt is obviously going to be there no matter what and i've had times where when things moved so fast and we went from zero to 70k and you know in two weeks i'm like you know in, there's that like bad angel on the side or whatever the devil on your shoulder saying you know that as fast as this was brought to you it could be taken away just as fast and so that always kind of like sat in the back of my head as like momentum and, and motivation to keep moving and, and getting the right things in, in place. And I think that in business too, it's like you're making decisions every single day and the decisions that are made, if they get stacked on top of each other as the wrong decisions is when things fall apart. But if you're making the right decisions in like eight out of 10 times, they're right. And then two, like you'll be fine. Like, yeah. but it's when you start out weighing like six decisions bad and then the four are good. Now you're like, okay, things get shaky. Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I recently went through that I'd love to hear your opinion on is I grew a little too fast. So like, I forget exactly what the re Oh, TikTok shop, right? So we're yeah. growing consistently. It's going well, you know, it's like 40K a month, 50K a month, 58K, 65. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, TikTok shop, boom, 150K, one yeah. month. You're like, oh, fuck yeah. You start, you start yeah. getting out your calculator. You're like, damn, if I can keep up this kind of growth, we're going to yeah. be a $10 million company in like six months. Like you start getting hella excited. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you do go to, when you grow too fast, 
it, it's bound to come yeah. down at some point. I'm curious if anything is like that has ever happened. hundred percent. Like exactly what you just said. Like we've had some times where, you know, we're growing so fast. I bring on a new agency and they're cranking and working super well. You know, we go from doing 140 a month to 240 or 50 the next month. And I'm like, okay, a hundred thousand dollar jump, but I had the inventory for it. But at the end of June, like I'm so new to it, of course, I'm going to just, you know, say, I don't know everything. Like, we ran out of inventory and I was like, That's exactly what happened to me. And I was like, you know what? Like, you know, throughout the, throughout June, I'm like sitting pretty, I'm good. I'm feeling all right. And then I'm like, oh shit, we only have three weeks left of inventory and it's three months lead time. It takes three months to make three classes. Months oh, to make shit, sunglasses. That's that why that it's so gnarly and tough for us to be able to like balance everything. And so when that happened uh, in June, when we were going crazy, I was like, oh my God, we have three weeks. So I placed an order for, you know, uh, it was a $150,000 order. And pretty much threw it all back in. Threw it all back in because I was like, we're, we're blowing up, you know, we're going to be at 400K by November. And so what happened was, is when we ran out of stock of everything, we had to pull back on ads completely. And so we pulled back and lost yep. efficiency. And then we ran in going into June or going into uh, November, instead of doing the 400,000 projection with the inventory that we have in stock, we're doing 150. Yeah. And so then it puts you in a cash flow position. Like you've mentioned in your videos, you're like, I got $15,000 worth of inventory purchases and 10,000 in the bank account. So yeah, no, <laughs> I've well, been there. It, was, it was much worse than that yeah. actually. But um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's same exact thing. And the worst part is the demand is not really there anymore. Yeah. You know, same thing with ads, it's whether momentum. it is ads or, or organic marketing, like when your business is growing and everything's great, you, you keep ordering more because you're like, well, it's going to sell because people are buying. But yeah. then all of a sudden, you know, you can't use your ads anymore because you're low on capital or you're out of stock. So people just assume that there's nothing there. They stop visiting your site. Your sessions go way down. And then all of a sudden, when you do get inventory back in, you'd love to hope that yeah. everything would just start pumping again. But it doesn't. You're, it you're doesn't. literally st like it's not like you're going up and then you crash down. You don't just start back up here and keep going. You need to slow You're building the momentum back up. Back up. And so it that's, time. that's where I'm at in the building You're building back up phase. And then we're tracking for it, which is good. But instead of like, when I brought the agency on, we did 250 K a month. I'm like, let's get to a million a month like that. Like by end of year, like December, I want to be at a million a month. And they're like, all right, let's do it. Like not asking if inventory is going to be okay. I was just, you know, naive. Yep. I didn't know. It's like learning curves, but detrimental learning, learning curves. And if I, you know, didn't know what to do in those positions and I'd be screwed. And so now I have, you know, a line of credit. And so I'm, I'm using that knowing that I can buy my future with inventory. And so mm -hmm. like when you own a product-based business, you're, you're buying inventory for your future so you can scale up to that. But if you don't hit that, then you're, you're, you're stuck. How big of a line of credit is for anyone, for any kid out there who doesn't understand like what credit is at all. This is something yeah. I, I love talking about because when you're in a business that's all cash flow based, um, you, once again, you have to buy ahead of time, right? And you need to take a risk constantly. Like, yeah. okay, because if you don't order enough, then you can't grow. If you order too little, then, uh, or yeah, if you, if you order too little, you can't grow. If you order too much, then you're stuck, you know, with too much yeah. product and no so money. First so. off, I don't recommend anybody to start a business on credit. Never do that because you just don't know if it's going to work and you're taking a risk and it's huge. Um, the chances of you succeeding are not high in the first place. It is what it is. That's just what it is, you know? Um, so what I would recommend doing is taking a small order um, and doing like a minimum viable product. So it's like the best thing you can make at a low order quantity. So every supplier is going to have an MOQ of like around 300 pieces. So if you're doing shorts, you buy 300 pieces and that's not going to put you in the, in the, in the hole, like get a job, work, make five grand, enough money to start your business. You get the inventory. Now you got to learn organic social because that's going to show, that's going to be zero cost per acquisition. You can't afford it. So then once you kind of hit a critical mass within the uh, organic social, then you can now hire somebody to run paid ads for you and really scale the brand up. But you have to look at the numbers to make sure it's profitable. Um, but with line of credit, the way it works is like, you know, I took out a $200,000 line of credit and I've used half of it now, but it's fine because that's a 10 year term. So like most banks, when you can show revenue are going to say, okay, like based on your revenue, you know, I asked for 200, they probably would have gave me more you have, it's a 10 year term. And so like my term is 10 years, uh, at 11.6% rates are crazy right now, but per year, per month, per 10 in 10 or 
uh, 11. I, I, it's on my spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't need the exact numbers, but yeah, yeah. you know, I'm trying to understand this. No, myself, so the too. way the way it works is you have 10 years to pay it off. Um, you have a minimum purchase or minimum payment every month, and so you're buying time with that. Like that's saving me and allowing me to scale the brand, and that'll just be a revolving credit line, which is cool. So. What you can do is like, for example, if you have inventory that you're going to set yourself up for six months, you know, it's going to sell, then you can get a credit line, pay for the inventory. And then you have, uh, it extends your time to be able to pay it off. And are they giving you the cash? Are they inserting it into your bank account or are they giving you a credit card with a 200 K limit or how do you- So they'll, they'll like set up a, an account with 200 K in it. And then you're just pulling from a bank. So you don't get mm-hmm. charged credit or the interest until you pull from it. So if I pull out 10,000, then I owe, uh, would that be $1,116 or every month, yeah, 1160 bucks. Uh, no, not every month. That 1100 bucks is on the 10 year, 10 year term. So if I, let's say use a hundred thousand dollars worth, that's $11,600 that I have to pay over that 10 year term, which is including the hundred thousand. Okay. Gotcha. So it's on top of the hundred thousand. Gotcha, so okay. it just makes it bigger, but like, ideally you don't want to be in that position. And that's really where we're at. Like if we hit our projections this year, we'll have the thing paid off by, uh, June, um, or may, um, or no, June, July. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so June, July, we'll have it paid off. And then from there, that's when you start really making money. Well, now you have some cash in the bank. Now got you're, you, got, you have, yeah, you have. But the, the thing that happened was, is we ordered way too much inventory. And so now what I'm doing is like, I have inventory that's going to be sitting on the shelves for a year and a half. And so, yeah, but luckily it's not great because I don't have the ability. That's just tied up money and Mm -hmm. you can't write off inventory. And so that money is just like tied up in a product that's not selling as well as I wanted it to. So now we have like projections and we're using software to calculate like, okay, our lead time's 120 days we're going to order 150 days worth of inventory and place an order every month. I would love to know what software you're using because I'm... I got you. Can you tell me after? Because... I'll tell you right now. Oh, bad. I mean, I'll give the... Because I'll I'll explain my issue that I'm dealing with as in my clothing brand. Um, I don't know. You know, demand is all over the place. You'd want to hope that it's, you know, steady growth. And right now it's that way, but that might not happen all of a sudden. It might go crazy high, it might go crazy low. Who knows? Well, the cool thing about this... uh, app or it's like a, yeah, it's a software. So what you do is you set up your projections for the year. And that's why I'm really focused on consistency this year, not growing at like fucking crazy yeah. numbers. I just want to grow consistently and healthy. Um, it's called Predico, first of all. Predico. I think I've heard Predico. of that actually before. And, and so what you do is you set up like, okay, next month I'm projected based on like last month, we'll probably do this, then this, then this. And we set revenue tar- or ad spend targets per day with the agency. Mm-hmm. So then we say, okay, every month we're going to be spending this at this ROAS, we're going to hit this revenue. And so then the software takes the revenue based on your historical sales history and says, okay, you're selling the Lautner and whiskey, you're selling 15 pairs a day historically for the past six months. Um, so you need to order, you have, you know, 120 days left of inventory. Mm. And then, you know, then you do the calculation. You're like, okay, I'll order instead of 5,000 at a time, like I was doing, Mm. I'm going to order 800. Every two weeks or every, something like every, that. Every month or every two months. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It'd probably be two weeks for me because I'm clothing month turnaround Dude, time. Yeah. That's cr- like, oh my I God. I also have way more SKUs. So <laughs> yeah. that's going to get very complicated. I'm not well, I got, I got 48 SKUs now. So oh, that, we, wow. Okay. we got, it's getting pretty yeah. uh, hectic, but we're working on it. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, for me, it's like. You got sizing. Well, I didn't really. Size, yeah. sizing, That's brutal. colors, different garments. Like we probably have like 150 SKUs right now. Yeah. It'll probably be like a thousand by the end of the year. Cause we didn't even have that many yeah. products going into this year. Now we're trying to get a ton. Um, well, let me ask you this. Are you, um, do you have like a, a hero product? I know the shorts are your, your yeah, product, I mean, yeah, like it'd be a hero color. Yeah, probably like the UNC blue squid house yeah. ones. I mean, I, I would say that we have three. They're pretty even consistently. Always those three are killing it. Okay. But actually, I kind of made the mistake of saying, okay, these are the ones that are doing the best. I'm just going to only buy those. I'm going to get rid of this. The yeah. ones that people don't buy as many of, Yeah. Um, which kind of screwed me. And now I need to go back and order more because that's just decreasing the you don't realize, lifetime value of the main customers who want to buy all of them. Who, yeah. You know, you also don't realize like when you're doing scale and you have a hero product, you're like, well, let's just like double down on the hero product. Yes. But you also need to make sure like, okay, if you have, let's say 10 SKUs and you sell one of each, that's like nine pairs per day. And like, sure, they're not selling, you know, 20 pairs, but like those one or two, they accumulate for sure. And yeah, it's huge. No, absolutely. And so going back a little bit, I like how you said 
you know, don't take the massive risk of credit or borrowing money right at the beginning, right? I think, um, you know, I made a video about this. It might've been yesterday or the day before. I said, I would be willing to bet that if most people got a hundred K or a million dollars from their dad or their grandma or whatever, and they use it to start a business, I would bet that most people, if it was their first business, would lose it right away. And I think that's because in my opinion, it's best to actually start a business and be forced to be frugal, right? Starting yeah. it with $5,000, yeah. $10,000, right? Um, you know, you have to figure out how to get creative in your marketing. You can't just throw money at shit and hope that it works, right? You have to, you know, pick one product to start with instead of 10. So, yeah. you know, it forces you to get creative and to really be an entrepreneur and, and hustle as opposed to just yeah. like throwing money thinking that that's going to solve everything. And no matter how good of an entrepreneur you are, you're going to have to spend money to gather data. And yeah. so like... You know, I wouldn't even start a business right now with a credit line, even with everything I know, just knowing that there's so many variables that have to work for it to be. And that's not to deter anybody from being an entrepreneur. Like, trust me, you just got to take swings and like you, you're going to hit, you're going to hit one. Absolutely. It just takes time. What, um, you know, on the topic of being an entrepreneur, you know, I myself, I work all the time. I still enjoy myself when I get to have fun and yeah. I have a system for how I balance everything. But, you know, what was, what's <laughs> life like for you right now? in terms of balance and what was it like first starting? So we'll start with first starting. First starting was uh, every single day I was on my phone. Like I was posting 15 to 20 TikToks a day, just spamming. But the good thing- What kind of content was that like? It was all the short form content. So it's like- lots of editing, lots of- Editing back and forth. I had my like, you know, the hook video that worked pretty consistently to just grab attention at the beginning. And then I just like keep messing with like different pacing through the video, like showing lifestyle photos, showing aesthetic photos, and then showing the product at the end. But like my formula when we were going consistently viral, I know the algorithms changed a bit, but sometimes they do, um, is like in the first, you know, three seconds is the hook, you know, everyone knows that, but like you really need to find a pain point of something, especially if you're selling a product, like first off, no one's going to buy your product unless it's solving a problem. And so like, even with fashion, people buying Prada bags, like it's a status symbol. That's a problem. It's fixing the problem of being, yeah, nerd. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Or not, not, not having style, you know? Yeah. So. Exactly. Um, But then you go into, you know, the problem and then you say, you know, the sunglasses that will make you look famous, they're the, you know, best pair of sunglasses. And then you go into like the aesthetic photos. So you're showing other people living the dream. And so you're selling the dream. Mm. You're selling the lifestyle. So if you're trying to sell a plane ticket, you're selling the vacation, not the plane ticket. So the the plane ticket gets you to the vacation or yeah, to the destination. Interesting. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this and I'm thinking in my head, okay, this is what I have to do too. Because once again, I said, I, I suck at like making, you know, I'm good at talking about my story and my content yeah. and my experience as an entrepreneur, but I'm not really that good at creatives. Yeah. And, you know. Um, I would say that's my specialty. It's okay, like, interesting. Every, so yeah, this is, let's, yeah. let's dive in right yeah, now. Okay, for so sure. for me with my brand, what, what would advice would you have? You know, should I be making videos saying like, if you want to, if you want a sick running outfit or if you want to look like a, a stud runner for like this new pair of running shorts. Well, you can do a different type, a couple different types. Like the comparison ad works really well. So you compare mm-hmm. it to like a pair of Lululemons. Yeah. And so people already associate with that. And a lot of like what you're doing with a brand or a product anyways, like nobody learns anything without associating to something that they already know. So mm-hmm. the comparison ads work really well because you're associating something that's very common and then you're showing why yours is better. And mm. so like you can do a comparison ad with like, you know, um, in scene, blah, 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 like all the features and benefit. Guy, and, guy with basketball yeah. shorts down to his knees versus like the really cool new exactly. short shorts. You show the drawstring, off. like you want to show the experience of like owning it and having yeah. it on your body because people are going to be like, you know, they want to feel it in their hands before they even have it in person. So like, that's why close-ups work really well, like showing the stretch, Um, Mm -hmm. Fabletics does it that you could steal from them is like they pull their shorts out like this really far and that shows the you know ability the range of motion and so like you also can hit on a pain point of running so let's see like if you've ever been on a run and you got bunched up in the back our shorts don't do that you know anytime you've been stretching and like you feel the seam on your leg you don't feel the seam like Mm -hmm. The ability, range of motion, you're not going to cramp. You're like, I don't know. You just if get you, creative. If with you chafe yeah. while you're running, like you should try exactly. this, something like that. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But like features and benefits is like a big portion of it. So like features are the logical and then benefits are the emotional. Mm-hmm. And so the logical side of things for the sunglasses <clears throat> would be like, 
you know, shape memory acetate so they can bend. Well, any then, sunglasses block, they, yeah. all sunglasses do the same thing. Just like all shorts do the same thing. Yeah, it's something to work out in. The biggest thing you want to do with a, a commoditized product is figure out how to decommoditize it. Yeah. And the way you do that is make it so enticing for somebody to want to get it that they'll part with their money and then you have to deliver. So mm -hmm. you have these bold claims and then when they receive it, like you have, they, they better like it or your return rate's going to be crazy. But yeah. we have a 6% return rate in fashion, which I feel like is solid. <laughs> take, a, take a guess what mine is. Uh, it's crazy low. Dude, because organic, when people love the founder and yeah. stuff, like when I was going organic viral ads at like a three, but I would assume you're maybe at like a two. It's like a, it's like a 1.3%. That's percent, crazy. Which is great. Cause like, yeah. um, but I will, we also like, like if anyone's not happy whatsoever, like we'll send them a new pair. Oh, yeah. We'll, I, I send a lot of shit out for free. Like, um, you know, so. Yeah. We, we treat everyone like family, like anybody, yeah. like a friend, you know, if they're not happy with something for the most part, like we'll, we'll send them something for free or we'll how could you not bro? It. I was ordering some, like a, I ordered a vest off of some golf brand the other day. might've yeah. been, um, I forget. It was like a vest. I, I ordered it right before the open like a year ago. Cause I wanted to go to the WMO waste management yeah. open Place is and crazy. I, yeah, <laughs> fucking nuts. I pay hella money for like a expedited yeah. shipping. You know, it doesn't come in time. I email them. I'm like, you know, Hey, it's, it didn't come in time. So now can you, can you reroute it to like this new address? Yeah. And, and they were just cocksuckers, dude. They were just yeah. so rude. Like it's not our problem. And I never yeah. buy from them again. Well, ever. that's why like, having the right people on your team is so important too, because like our three PL is so good. I'll be like, yeah. Hey, this customer, like, you know, e individual orders guy, I don't know. He'll reach out and he's like, Hey, I have a, I have a trip on Friday and it's like Tuesday afternoon. And he's like, he needs the sunglasses by the, by Friday. For I'm that like, trip, that, that picture of that dump. On exactly. Instagram. But yeah. you know, that's what they feel good about. That's why they yeah. buy them, you know? And so I, uh, you know, reach out to my three PL, it's like three 30 on a Wednesday and they're like, or on a Tuesday and they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll run it to the post office before it closes. And so mm -hmm. they like, they run it over and like, I can do that. You know, obviously I don't take advantage of it, but yeah, they do that. And so pe having the people like that, having customer service that just takes care of people. I think customer service is so overlooked. Oh yeah, dude. Like it's crazy. The, it's not the most important thing, the product and the story, but a customer service is probably number three. I think product and customer service is hand in hand. Yeah. Like literally and product is the number one most important thing about your brand. Like <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah you could have the best marketing in the world, but like if you don't have a good product, like you're that's feels like a scam you know how do you go about do you when you were building your brand um you know you said at the beginning it was the product wasn't that great are you still to this day trying to create a better product or are you pretty pretty confident in the one you guys currently have you're like this no, is it's, it can't get much better we're always going to look for better opportunities and like the other thing too is i'm not afraid of price like i want to have the best experience for the customers. So we're doing some upgrades on these next ones. And mm -hmm. so we're going to do anti-reflective coating on the, on the back. So like, you're not going to have glare. It's going to mm -hmm. take away the glare. There's other things that we're looking into doing. It's going to increase the cost for us. And I'm not afraid of, you know, also when you do have stuff that you're in, this is kind of a business thing and the consumer is not stoked. But yeah. <laughs> you raise prices, you know, it's okay. And that's like a business. You can raise prices by 10 bucks in some, you know, in some cases. How, okay. So that's a great, if it's justifiable. I'm glad you brought that up because I'm, you know, I'm curious what you think I should do or your take on this. I'm constantly having people in my comments. Well, this company sells for cheaper, yeah. right? Oh, 50 bucks, 60 bucks for a pair of shorts, right? Everyone who's bought our stuff, no, I don't know if you've ever gotten it. I, I'll send you some, by the yeah, way. I was going to order some soon. Uh, yeah. I'll just send you some for free, bro. Oh, yeah. But um, dude, everyone that has our stuff loves it. Yeah. That's why our return rate is so low. That's why our you know return customer rate, I don't know it off the top of my head, is so high. Well, I, um, I kind of like your approach. I think you're going to get, you're, you're going to say like, how do you justify higher pricing, right? Or, well, I'm, I'm curious, like, do you, maybe because you haven't been like in the spotlight as the founder, it makes it so there really is no one to complain to, yeah. but because I'm known as the founder, right. I'm, you know, I'm on social media. I'm, I'm, I have a platform that almost makes me like 
like a friend to the, to the consumer. Yeah. Like when I run it, like I'll go out to bars and stuff. I'll have five to 10 people come up yeah. to me, but, Oh, I love the brand. I bought some like, this is like, it's, yeah. it's great seeing you. Like they treat me like I have known me for years because they know so much about my life. So they story. expect a discount or a deal on everything. That, that's a whole, that's, <laughs> that's a whole different story. Yeah. So, which I'm curious about too, but I have a lot of people that are always comment 50 bucks for a pair of shorts, 60 bucks for a pair yeah. of shorts. That's insane. Oh, I get right? it. How, I, like, what do I you do when people say a hundred, what is the average price right now? 135? 140. 140. Yeah. For yeah. a pair of sunglasses. And that's, do I, you think, I think they're cheap. Do I, you, I'm the founder and I own the pair and I know what they're made of. And yeah, I they're, they're, they're great, but I, yeah. still you can't like some people will still comment that. And some people associate cost with the experience and not like they, they just yeah. want it cheap, right? There's so many people out there that are just cheap. So when someone does comment, $140 for a pair of sunglasses, I could get them for 30 at Walmart. Yeah. Do you ignore those comments? Do you reply to them and say, well, actually, like, do you try and persuade them? Do you, what's your method? Well, how think, do you go about well, Whenever I go that? about like thinking about how I'm going to market a product or starting a new, you know, business or helping people with a business is I say, tell me every single thing or every reason why somebody wouldn't buy your product. Hmm. And so like write out the list, like, you know, sh I don't know the shipping. I don't know this. It costs too much. And like, if it costs too much, you know, some products are just out of people's price range and they're not your target audience, unfortunately. And like, you know, when I get those comments and stuff, I pretty much am just like, you know, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's kind of a tough conversation. I don't know. You don't want to say it like you can't afford them. I guess you're just not our target audience. You know, but so, like, that's kind of how I feel. Dude, you know? I, okay. I have a funny story <laughs> about that. So I had this friend growing up his dad was like a, the best, um, landscaper in all of Napa Valley where yeah. he grew up, like a beautiful, stunning house. Like he would do the landscaping work for these extremely wealthy multimillionaires, even probably some billionaires. And the, yeah. these projects would be anywhere from 200 grand for your front yard to a million and a half for like yeah. a whole, you know, redo of your entire house. Right. Yeah. The landscaping wise. Um, and he said a lot of wealthy people are really cheap and they'll complain and they'll be like, well, I could go to Ernesto's company, like down the street. Yeah. And you're telling me it's 250K. You know, Ernesto quotes me for 150K. The, and the, yeah. what he told me, his response yeah, to that is, well, listen, like if, if you can't afford it, like that's no problem at all. You know, Ernesto is a great guy, but, um, you know, if, if you're looking for a cheaper service, I would recommend going to him. Yeah. And what people always say is like, oh, are you calling me poor? Like, they get, yeah, like they you kind of like get a little undertone of it. Yeah. So that's what I try and do sometimes. Like, oh, I say that all the time. If they're like, you can find them on Amazon, you can find dupes. I'm like, yeah, you can get the dupe. I literally, like, if you don't think the price is right, if you, if you want to go get the dupe, go like, that's fine. But I know that you're not going to be part of like this community that wears them because, you know, people do see other people wearing them and they go up and they're like, yo, what up? Like, yeah. you know, I've seen it in like when I'm at Petco Park here, like I'll go to a game and see three or four people wearing them. And I was like, I ran into a guy, I started talking to him. He's like, oh, I saw another guy and I went up to him. I'm like, that's what I want. Do they know that you're the yeah. founder? Do you say what's up? You go, I love that brand too. Or do you say, hey, I'm the founder? No, I go up and I'm like, yo, six, six shades. And usually since I'm in all the ads, they're yeah. like, thanks, man wait a minute. That's and then they're like, yo, you're him. I'm like, yeah, I'm the fucking point up guy. <laughs> that's like, dude, that's <laughs> Which the, is funny. that like making money's awesome. Yeah. Having that financial freedom, um, you know, is awesome. But I personally, for me, there's nothing cooler than like being at the gym yeah. Or being at a festival. A lot of people like to wear our stuff at a festival. Same thing yeah. with you at the beach, at a, at a stadium and seeing someone wear your product. It is, yeah. it is the coolest feeling because yeah. you're creating something from nothing and yeah. then other people like it. Right. Exactly. It's, it's great. And so, you know, I think a lot of people, including myself, want to be entrepreneurs at a young age because they want to be rich one day. Right. It always starts like, I want to be rich. Yeah. I'm going to start a business. I feel like that thrill quickly fades. And the only thing you care about, it's not how much money is hitting your account. It's yeah. how is the business doing? Well, I think the biggest thing that was a catalyst for me was when I stopped focusing on just becoming rich and focusing on serving people like genuinely, like I literally was like, I'm just going to serve value for people as much as I possibly can and like create something that they enjoy and kind of approaching it that way instead of just like, how can I arbitrage and like just become loaded? And it's like, no, I'm going to create an experience and go above and beyond, create a product that, you know, costs more than the average pair of sunglasses, sell it at a reasonable price for what I'm doing and give an experience where people are excited to, you know, open their package and then go out and wear them. Like I get a review every other day. Like I 
I can't wait to walk outside. Every time I walk outside, I make sure I have my Kioras. I'm like, let's go. Let's I was on a trip the other day um, and I forgot mine and I was pretty upset to be honest. And uh, yeah. I was hoping like, I'm curious, are you all D to C right now? Yeah, hundred percent. We're opening up retail. Okay. That's awesome. Um, this year though. So we're going to get in some shops. And other shops, you doing your own shops? Are you doing pop-ups or what's your, what's your plan for that? Yeah. So we're going to, that's a huge it's transition, a, it's a huge jump. It's very operational. The reason I love e-com and DTC is like, I think I went over the other question. I didn't say what I was like. My lifestyle now mm. is very hands off. I mean, I'm very involved with the brand on a number side and like bird's eye view of everything that's going on, looking at the numbers and making decisions that way. But when it comes to day to day, I'm not working a lot. And mm. so like mentally I'm busy, but like time I'm very free. Mm. And so like, I'm always thinking of what I need to be doing, but like, I don't do any of the day to day work, uh, which is good. Yeah. You know, that's how, how well, it should that's be. the goal. You don't want to be, yeah. it's, it's hard to build when you're doing yeah. everything. How many employees do you have right now? Um, no one's full time. And so it's all Same thing with me. freelance, which is, I think the perfect way to run a Nikon business until you're at like 10 million a year, then you start bringing things in house. But about 15 people are that's like exactly what we're trying to do right now. That's yeah. great, dude. Hell yeah. yeah. And yeah. are you, is there much of a team aspect? Do you, do you feel like, do you have any sort of leadership advice in terms of owning a business? How do you, how do you get your guys to perform above yeah. their paycheck? Is the so way I like to ask. Leadership is the ability to like, anytime someone comes on, I say, Hey, look, I work for you. You don't work for me. My job is to make sure that you have everything you need to be successful. So did you copy me saying that on I my video? I because did. I literally I made swear to God, I, I literally made a video you know saying who, the exact same thing, but I love that you say that. You man, know who I told agree. Me that was my stepdad because he was a military, he was in the military and he came into the military as a, uh, an officer and he walked in, he was like, Hey, like leadership, here's how it goes. Oh yeah. And so he told me that and I, it stuck with me. But yeah, I think a lot of people, um, yeah, bossing people around sucks. Micromanaging people sucks. Um, I think that's an old way of doing business and, um, you know, I don't know about you. I'm sure you'll get a lot of this when you decide to make that jump onto creating a big personal brand for yourself and talking yeah. about your experience. But a lot of people are going to hit you up and say, Hey, I'd love to work for you. I'll work for free. I get, yeah, right? I get that sometimes. I'm but, sure. Yeah. I'm sure you yeah. get it right now. And the thing is though, like it's better to find someone who's really good at what they do and have yeah. them tell you what they need to do their job the best way than you, you getting some kid that has no idea what he's doing. Even if he yeah. is for free, you're going to have to micromanage. You're going to have to figure out a job. hundred you know? percent. And like the, the two things I look for when I'm hiring somebody is their skill, skill set and how good they are. If they can teach me and be an expert that I'm learning from, that's who I look for first off. And then they have to hit that criteria and then it's hunger. Like they have to be hungry to like, and I incentivize, like never have an employee that's just like, you know, here you go. I'm like, I want to see you win. And if you win big, you win big with me. And so you'll incentivize people. Like anytime you bring on a media buyer or something, you're going to do some type of percentage. Um, I don't recommend doing percentage of ad spend. Okay. Yeah. What, what do yeah. you run right now with that? With uh, what we do, I had ad guys and they were trying to take a percent of top line revenue from oh, our ads. No. And I was like, well, fuck no, dude, I, what I set up, kill your business. What I set up was ROAS profit. Okay. And so if you anything above a one ROAS, they get a percentage of whether mm -hmm. it's five, 10, 15, however you want to set it up. But like if, you know, my agency is spending a hundred thousand dollars a month and then we're at a 2.5 ROAS, a hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, they get, for example, 10%. Um, and that, but if know, they it, can achieve a five row ass, then they get oh, they 15, get 20 percent, something crazy. Yeah. yeah, they 10 percent, cool. so like 50,000. Yeah. So that encourages them. That's interesting. I haven't yeah. heard that before. Maybe I'll need to implement that because that encourages them to, you know, after they've put a shit ton of work into their creatives and, and, and their, and their system that they built and it's good, it's at 4.2 row ass, whatever you're like, this is solid. Yeah. That encourages them. Let's go back and see if we can do it one little bit better again. Yeah. Um, someone on a retainer probably won't want to put in that extra yeah. work to. Well, and the, the tricky thing you get into is when you are spending over 50000 a month and then you move to a new agency that is promising you the world, which happens all the time. Yeah, and you go to them that. and you say, and they're like, okay, 10% of ad spend. And you're like, well, I just worked super hard to get my brand up to 50000 a month in ad spend. And now I'm going to pay you 5,000 a month with no track record of my brand. And so then I've hired some people where, 
you know, I'm, I'm spending five, it's, it's more than five, but like we were spending 80,000 and it's $8,000 of, you know, our revenue and, or bottom line expenses. And so it's like, I'm paying them $8,000 and they just achieved me a 1.4 ROAS on Facebook platform. That and I'm sucks. like, what the Why fuck? are you switching? Why? Did yeah. I? Cause they guarantee you. Well, I mean, I sometimes like performance isn't there. And you're like, okay, like the strategies and tactics that we were, you know, talking about at the beginning of the don't work with my brand because every brand is so different. You have yeah. to approach it completely different um, with paid ads. And so mm -hmm. like your strategy would be completely different from mine, like sure. your broad targeting and everything, but they'll promise you the world. And then you're like, okay, you know what? Like you sold me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes they hit a home run and you stay with them forever. And like, it's great. But, nice. You know, that's been kind of like the position I'm in with, when we did 240,000, we hit inventory. I hired a different agency and things mm. went tricky. Gotcha. So yeah. how do you, how do you go about saying no to every fucking person and their mom that's hitting you up, trying to offer you a service? I get, <laughs> I'm literally on the phone with some, a new person every single day, new yeah. 3PL, new ads team new um creative agency right every all the time hey i can guarantee you this and well, then you say yeah. hey sorry bro no I'm, I'm pretty happy with what i got and they go okay well let me they try and sell yeah. you and shit and it's just like bro no i think it's important to invest in people that are already on your team and, and have them grow with you and compound with you because like an agency that's going to be with you for six months knows your brand a hell of a lot better than this agency promising the world starting at square one so now you're building more like mm -hmm. finding momentum again it's just like you know, what you said earlier about jumping to a new opportunity, you know, working with your team to fix the problems is all is not always, but sometimes a better choice than switching to somebody who's promising the world, but saying no to people like, you know, I get hit up all the time, but I don't reply to emails much at all. Like, yeah, I, I, every single phone call that comes through that I don't have the number, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, send a voicemail. Yeah. I mean, that's like, a good question in general. How do you say no in general to people now trying to, yeah. you know, being an entrepreneur is busy as hell. Right. And you, and you want to maximize your time. Right. Um, yeah. And as you become more successful, more old friends and family and uh, people who weren't the nicest to you back in the day, reach out. Oh, congrats, bro. I'm yeah. thinking of starting a business too, by the way, would you mind? Uh, yeah. I mean, on the phone, I'd dude, or a DM that's like yeah. someone will DM you and go, I love what you've done with the brand. Like, I would love to pick your brand for 15 minutes. And you're like, well, I would love to just chill at a beach. For 15 <laughs> yeah. minutes, you know? No, like, I get that a lot. And from like f friends who have seen like the, the rapid success that we've had. And like, I grew up being the worst student. Everyone knew that I was like a horrible student. Like high school, got a 2.4. College, first semester, 1.8. Like, Where'd you go to college? San Diego State. How the fuck did you get into San Diego State with a 2.4? It football <laughs> i was oh, supposed did you were a college football player no i was supposed to walk on and i ended up oh, just gotcha, deciding okay. not to but yeah I, I literally like was like yeah i'm fired up i'm gonna walk on and hopefully earn a scholarship and then the second i got my acceptance i was just like uh, not for me <laughs> this, this is not i mean dude me. i had three concussions in high school and i'm like i'd rather have my brain than a body yeah and or then being able to hopefully go to the nfl i'm like i'm five nine dude <laughs> yeah i'm not going to the nfl so um but yeah well, so yeah, my question was like, or I guess at that point, yeah, in, in terms of college, just it was not, not for you. No, not did for you finish. Me. Or did I did. You drop yeah. Out? So I dropped out halfway through and then I started working uh, for a real estate agent and I was going to get, again, trying to get into architecture and just that world. And so I worked with him and I got a really sick opportunity. I, I reached out to him and I'm like, Hey, I'll pretty much work for you for free, just doing anything. And I ended up becoming his driver. And so he uh, sells like some of the most insane homes all over Orange County. Um, a lot of the houses that I was working on after college, he was selling and I was in all the listing presentations with him and also in every single meeting with him. And he runs the biggest real estate uh, team with Coldwell Banker in the nation. I'm pretty sure nice. it's, wow. they do over a billion a year in, in transactions. And so I literally learned his business and how he approaches leadership and how he approaches like setting things up and like, He's just so, he always stressed like his time is the most important thing and staying in your lane. Like he'd always say, stay in your lane. Like with- What do you mean by that? So if you're really good at content and driving the business forward with organic, you then like hire people out that are better than you mm. and then stay out of their fucking business. Like just let them, let them cook. You know? Yeah, let them cook. Yeah. I like that. And so- Nice. 
uh, that's been a, a really important thing too, because then that buys back all your time and you let them, you trust them that they're going to do a good job. And so you kind of then just focus on what you like doing and what you're really good at. Sweet. Hell yeah. All right. So getting near the end here, I got a couple, yeah. I got a couple of big questions for you. What's the current biggest thing you're struggling with in your business? It, it could be the bottleneck. It could be something in your personal life. What are you doing to combat that? With business, I would say it's the, um, the cash flow issue mm -hmm. that we created with inventory, um, where we have too much inventory and then performance, um, over, you know, if I'm being vulnerable at times, performance dips, sunglasses are very seasonal. And so during winter things slow down and your ROAS comes down and then, you know, you're, you're like hoping for things to hit in summer and then November. And then that kind of buys your, your year of profit, but mm -hmm. you know, you're profiting a little bit and then you hit these months where you just go crazy. And so you're balancing cash flow always. And, you know, that's why having an organic strategy, I always go back to it is so important. If you can acquire customers cheaply and have a high ROAS and, and build the business that way, nice. it just makes your life so much easier. But I would say, it cash flow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the exact same thing for me, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to check out that, that software you were talking yeah, about. Yeah. That, that seems helpful. Um, if you had to start from zero right now, I think a lot of people, there's a lot of entrepreneurs who have experienced this when you are dropping out of college or, you know, quitting your job to start your business, your, your mom and your, and your family member, your professor, your your girlfriend, your boyfriend, they're gonna be like, what if it fails? Yeah. Right? What if it fails? So what, dude? Right? Yeah, you learn, you're right? 20. So you're it, let's 20s. say like everything yeah. went to shit right now. And um, I knew what I knew now, or I don't. You you know what you know. Yeah. Let's let's for the sake of the scenario, let's say, um, you yeah. know, let's say the business just goes to shit and Kiora is done with, right? And I'm not and gonna I'm happen. At zero. Zero. I'm at you're zero. at zero, maybe yeah. you got like ten thousand bucks. Are you starting another? business in the sunglass space? Are you starting a clothing brand this time? Like, you know, you know, I think looking back, uh, sunglasses has been great and everything. And I, you know, I'm going to grow this business. It's my passion, but yeah. if I'm going to look at business and look at what I know now, I'm going to focus on a very problem solving pro like product. One that is a, a, a sticky business, like that a body wash or something like that. You mm -hmm. know, how do you differentiate a body wash in a saturated market? where you can differentiate because when you go into a saturated market people are always like stay away it's like people are already spending in it so now how do you just like arbitrage a little bit of that market share into something different that no one's ever seen bro before? look at harry's bro yeah or like deodorant's normally what two or three dollars the thing yeah dude, harry's is selling twelve dollars this little thing like that exactly. bro, it sucks too by the yeah. way and i'm just like but you you Fuck, you dude, made a video of right now. masa chips and so like, I was literally thinking of that too, yeah, yeah. yeah so like harry's for example is a perfect business model that's why they're worth a, a, i don't even know hundreds of millions is because it's a product that people are buying over and over again. And when you get someone married to your brand, their lifetime value is massive. And so sunglasses, you know, you buy a pair and my selling points is they last forever. So people buy one pair and come back in a year. How do I create a business that is, you know, doing consistent, that same customer spending with us every single month? Dude, absolutely. So, and for, for anyone listening or watching, I think this is something that a lot of first time entrepreneurs don't understand. It's something that you know, I've just started to comprehend, um, you know, after quite a few years of starting businesses, failing, learning lessons, you know, two years now on my current one, the lifetime value of your customer is quite possibly the most important thing in your business Absolutely. in terms of longevity, right? And so you can have a sick ass product, but if it's something that people only buy once, your business is going to die, guaranteed. Like I had an ice bath company, right? We had <laughs> yeah. 3 million in sales in the first yeah. seven months. Bro, only so many people can buy ice baths and you buy it once and you're done for. Yeah. You need to figure out a way to get people to continue buying stuff. You look at the most successful businesses in the world, Apple, Amazon, Uber, even companies like ExxonMobil. These are all products where you continuously have to buy their thing. You are stuck with it. Well, and like any business grows off three pillars. You have your cost per acquisition, which is like acquiring customers. And yep. so number one, you have to get people through the door. And then from there, how much can you, you know, get from that initial sale? So every sale that they purchase with you is your AOV, which is number two. And then number three is your lifetime value. And so if you can increase the lifetime value, the AOV, and your acquisition. Decrease you, your acquisition. Well, increase the amount of acquisitions oh, gotcha, okay, you get. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. But if you increase, you know, each of those by 10%, you just grew your business by 30%. 
And so how easy would it be to look at your ad or talk to your ads team, talk to somebody and say, okay, here's our problem with this one department. How do we increase acquisition by 10%? And then they're like, oh, well, 10%, you're not telling me to do double a hundred, you mm -hmm. know? So then you start going into each department and grow it by 10%. You grow it 30% a year, then you use the compound effect in 15 years, your brand is yeah, that's gone huge crazy. Long -term. Huge yeah, long -term. When you break things down like that, it simplifies it. And then you can formulate an answer. And so, yeah. yeah, in terms of longevity and, you know, increasing your AOV for Kiora, you know, how, what are you doing right now? And yeah. What, 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 what's new coming out of Kiora right now? I know you're working on some new lines of apparel, which I'm really excited yeah. for. I'm definitely going to get some of those. Like what, what can new customers or old customers get excited about right now? Yeah. So we're coming out with some new styles, um, in June, which is going to increase lifetime value, you know? Yeah. And so that's huge for us. Um, and also just giving people a better experience with the brand, you know, I think people are waiting for something new. Um, you always have to keep people excited. If you just hammer the same product over and over and over again, people get over it. And then they're like, Oh, it's this again. But you know, how do you keep things fresh and new coming out with new products coming out with new, uh, we're going to be doing, you know, more colorways, changing lens colors. And so just coming out with more options of things that people already love is huge too. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, unless you got any other questions or anything you want to touch on, like big, something else big, like this has been great. I've learned a lot. I hope everyone listening has learned a lot. Um, yeah. You know, thanks for coming on again, dude. It's been awesome. Nothing, nothing crazy uh, to talk about else, but <laughs> I appreciate though. you having me Fuck too. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, Thank well, you. Thanks for coming on the Squid Talk Pod, bro. Thanks for yeah. listening, guys. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. Parker Godfrey, Kiora, check them out. Like I said, I have like six pairs now. Awesome fucking brand. Um, you guys are growing like crazy. I'm really excited to see what you continue to do. So, yeah. And if you want to follow my tic personal TikTok, I'm giving them like a lot of free business advice and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah. I'll too, link all so, of this stuff yeah. if you guys want to check it out. Perfect. Cool. All, All right, right man. Thanks well, again. I appreciate it. We'll yeah. catch you guys in the next one. Take it easy. <laughs>